أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله سبحانه وتعالى in verse number 11 of Surah Al-Hujurat He says, O you who believe, let not a people ridicule another people. Perhaps they may be, they may be better than them. Nor let women ridicule other women. Perhaps they may be better than them. And do not insult one another, and do not call each other by offensive nicknames. Wretched is the name of disobedience after one's faith, and whoever does not repent, then it is those who are the wrongdoers. I'd like to welcome you all, brothers and sisters, to our, I believe, our fourth session on Surat and Hujurat. It's a blessing to have the tawfiq to come together and continue reciting and reflecting on the verses of the Qur'an at a time when many people, you know, kind of put the Qur'an to the side until the next month of Ramadan. So it's really something to be grateful to Allah for that He has given us the honor of being students of the Holy Qur'an even outside of the month of Ramadan. <clears throat> and uh, today you'll just have to bear with me my... My throat is a little sore, so uh, I might I might run out of gas a little earlier today, but I'll do my best to uh, to go the full time. So verse number 11, if you guys recall, when we spoke about the, the general outline of Surah Al-Hujurat, we mentioned that the first five verses of Surah Al-Hujurat deal with the etiquette that we have to observe in our interaction with the Holy Prophet. So akhlaq as it relates to our dealings with the Prophet. Verses 6 through 12 are verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us how to treat one another with respect. The, the etiquette that has to be observed between believers themselves. What are the things that we have to do to foster this atmosphere of brotherhood and sisterhood? What are the things that we have to avoid that can damage this, this camaraderie, the spirit of, uh, of brotherhood? So the ayah begins, Ya ayyuhalladheena amin, O you who believe. And it's important to note that in the Qur'an, typically when Allah begins a verse by addressing us, in such an honorable way. He says, O oh, you who believe, the instructions that will follow typically are requirements of faith. So when Allah says, O oh, you who believe, what is mentioned after, what follows, is essentially a prerequisite of faith. It's a requirement of faith that you have to implement these instructions for you to qualify to be in the rank of believers, of mu'mini. The, so there are a number of instructions in this verse. Number one, Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, la yaskhar qawmun min qawm. Do not ridicule one another. La yaskhar qawmun min qawm. Do not ridicule one another. You know, sometimes, brothers and sisters, you know, people make mistakes, and we see this even, unfortunately, in the mosques. You know, someone may be dressed differently. Someone may look differently. Someone may make a mistake. You know, sometimes you see people, they trip and they fall, and then people start to laugh. They start to ridicule them. The first thing that Allah mentions here is that, oh, you, because the, the, the verse prior to this, Allah was speaking about the idea of that you are brothers, you are brethren, that believers are not just friends. You are to treat each other as siblings who come from the same mother and father. That's how close you have to feel towards one another. Do not make fun of each other. Do not ridicule each other. Why? Asa ayyakunu khayran minhum. Asa ayyakunu khayran minhum. Do not ridicule one another. 
because those who you are ridiculing may be in the sight of God, they are, they are better than you. So you see from this verse, ridicule, ridicule, ridicule of the symptoms of arrogance, that ridiculing, making fun of other people is the sign of arrogance. And this is why you find that in order for you, if, if you have the habit of making fun of people, if you, if you observe in your own conduct that you have a tendency to ridicule, to put people down, this is typically a sign that there's a deeper problem, that ridicule is a symptom. What, but what is the disease? The disease is arrogance. That's why Allah says, Asa ayyakunu khayran min but pay attention. Maybe this person that you ridicule, that maybe they, they're not able to speak properly. Maybe they, they don't look as refined as you. Maybe they don't come from the same culture as you. You know, sometimes, you know, even at the, in the masjid, especially during the month of Ramadan, when we have our recitation circles and we recite a juz of Quran and then someone recites and they make some mistakes, you find that people ridicule them. They make fun of them. Maybe those people that you're making fun of, that you're ridiculing, maybe they are better in the eyes of God. And this is why Imam Zainul Abideen, salawatullahi alayhi, he gives us a way to always humble ourselves. He gives us a spiritual prescription that changes the way that we think about other people. So the hadith is that Imam Zain al-Abideen, because the only way you're going to prevent yourself from ridiculing and, and using disparaging language about others is that you, you truly have to feel this sense of humility. You can't, it can't be fake humility. It has to be genuine. You truly have to believe that you are not better than anyone. So how does Imam Zain al-Abideen try to instill this in us? He instills this in us by changing our thought process. So the Imam alayhi salam, he says that when you see someone who is older than you, when you look at someone who is older than you, don't, don't think that you are better than them. Tell yourself that this person who is older is better than me. Why? It's perhaps better than me because they have performed more ibadah than me. So you see someone who's 5, 10, 15, 20 years older than you, you should automatically assume that they are better than you. Why? Because they've offered more prayers than you. Chances are they have performed more fasts than you. They've fasted more Ramadans than you. They've, done more, they've recited more dua than you, presumably. So they have done more acts of worship. They've performed more acts of worship than you. And then Imam Zain al-Abidin, he says, and when you look at those who are younger than you, who are children, who are youth, you should assume that they are better than you. Why? Because they have committed less sins than I have. So someone who's younger, assume that they are better because they likely have committed less sins than you have. And then the Imam mentions how you, should, how you should view those who are the same age as you. So someone who's older than you, you give them the benefit of the doubt that they've probably performed more ibadah than you. So you assume that they're better. And those who are younger than you, you assume that they are better than you in the eyes of God because they've committed less sins. They're younger. They haven't committed as many sins as you have. But when you're dealing with someone who's the same age, Imam Zainul al what does he say? He says, assume that they are better than you because you are certain of the sins that you have committed. You have yaqeen regarding the sins that you've committed. But you have doubt about how many sins that person has committed. So you assume that they are also superior to you.
So when you interact with people from that perspective, it's impossible to be arrogant. You assume everybody is better than you. And you focus your attention inwardly, right? Most of us were fixated on what's happening externally. We need to reverse our attention towards the inward. We have to engage in this inward reflection. Ya ayyuhal ladhina aminu la yaskhar qawmun min qawm asa an yakunu khayran minhum. And this instruction is also is for men and women. You know, sometimes it happens where women, they ridicule each other. Right? Look at the way that she's wearing her hijab. You know, what is she wearing? Look at that look that she gave me. You know, sometimes we insult, they insult each other. So this, is a, this problem of ridiculing, and despair using making disparaging remarks it transcends gender it's not just a problem with men nor is it just a problem with women it's something that men and women have to pay attention to and you find so Allah mentions this idea of ridiculing making fun of people and then Allah says wala talmizu anfusakum and do not insult each other. You see, brothers and sisters, notice that Allah, if you take the, the verse literally, Allah says, وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Do not insult yourselves. So here Allah, when He speaks about lems, and you know, lems, even though it's translated as insult, lems, is basically to broadcast people's shortcomings to say things about people that will damage their reputation but the way that allah meant speaks about this he says do not do lems against yourselves because when you insult another believer you're actually insulting yourself because they are a part of you. You know, it's because Allah said the, the believers are brethren. We're brothers and sisters. When you insult your brother and your sister, you're insulting yourself because you're part of the same family. You know, we don't, we don't respect people who insult their brothers or sisters, their, their blood relatives. We don't respect those people because you're attacking your own family. Allah in the Quran, when he, when he addresses the believers, he says, Wala tilmizu anfusakum. Do not insult yourselves. When you insult another mu'min, what you're actually doing is you're insulting yourself. You're afflicting harm on yourself first and foremost. Wala tilmizu anfusakum. So lems is, is to talk about people and specifically to publicize to broadcast people's mistakes, people's shortcomings. And you find, brothers and sisters, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, the, the word lems is a Quranic term, and also the word hems is a Quranic term. If in Surah Al-Humaza, Allah says, وَيْلٌ لِكُلِّ هُمَزَةٍ لُمَزَةٍ so you have someone who is Hamaz and someone who is Lammaz. And they're both related to engaging in behavior that ruins other people's reputations. So some linguists, they say that Hems with a Ha, you know, is to slander someone to their face. And it's typically only used... It's slandering with the tongue. And others, they say that lems with the lamb, which is what we're talking about here, wala talmizu anfusakum, is to, to slander people behind their back. And it can it's even broader than just doing it with your tongue. Any type of gesture or behavior that hurts people's reputation. 
that you broadcast people's faults. And you see, brothers and sisters, this is this is an important verse in the Quran. You know, many Muslims they pray, they recite the Quran. Many Muslim fat many Muslims fasted the entire month of the of Ramadan. But how many Muslims do we know actually follow this ayah? Ya ladina amanu la yaskhar qawmun min qawm. Don't ridicule one another. Do not expose and broadcast people's faults, even if they're true. Even if they actually did make a mistake. Why do you have to broadcast it? Why do you have to spread it? There's a, a very shocking hadith from Imam al-Sadiq and the hadith is from Ishaq ibn Ammar. Ishaq ibn Ammar was one of the companions of Imam al-Sadiq. And he says, and he actually heard this from the sixth Imam. He says, Sami'tu Aba Abdullah. He says, I heard. Right. So this is you know someone who heard this with his own ears. I heard Aba Abdullah. I heard Imam al sadiq which is the kunya of Imam al sadiq And he was relaying to us a hadith from his grandfather, the Holy Prophet. So imagine you, you hear a hadith, and really, how, how fortunate are these people? That he can say that I heard this hadith from Imam al sadiq You know, we we are honored. You know, if you know if someone visits a marja, you know, we all lend our ears to this person to see what the the marja said. These are people who were sitting with the imma. So he says, I was sitting with Imam al sadiq and he shared with us a hadith from the Prophet, where the Prophet one day he made an announcement. And it seems that the Prophet was very frustrated with some of the Muslims because of their misbehavior, because of their lack of akhlaq. He said, Ya ma'ashara man aslama bilisanih wa lam yakhlusul imanu ila qalbi. Look at the way the Prophet, and the Prophet said this with a loud voice. And look at the way the Prophet, you get, there's a sense of frustration in the words of the Prophet, in the tone. The Prophet says, O oh, you who have submitted to Islam with your tongue, but faith has not yet entered your hearts. Imagine. So the Prophet is speaking from a place of frustration. What is he saying? He's saying to the Muslims, to all of us, La tadumul muslimin, that don't put down other believers. And do not try to find faults in people. Don't try to search for shortcomings. You know, there are some people, they, they pay close attention. It's as though they're waiting for you to slip. They're waiting for you to make a mistake. They're watching you. They're investigating. They're watching very carefully for you to slip up and they want to broadcast it. The Prophet says, do not be a fault finder. Do not seek out the faults of people. And then the Prophet says, if you do, there's a consequence. The one who actively tries to find imperfections and shortcomings and sins in people, If you seek to find faults in people, if you're searching for faults in people, Allah will search for faults in you. And if Allah makes it a point to find, to seek the faults and the shortcomings and the mistakes in you, He will humiliate you, even if you are in your house. Meaning, it's not that someone is going to come and expose you. Allah will expose you. So we have to be very careful. We shouldn't 
broadcast. We shouldn't expose people's faults because if you do, if you're that, if you have this type of mindset, if you engage in this type of gossip, you want to damage people's reputation. Allah will damage your reputation. If you expose people, Allah will expose you. And if Allah exposes you, even if you are hiding in your house, He'll humiliate you. He'll denigrate. He'll 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 make you someone who is wretched in the eyes of people. وَلَا تَلْمِزُ أَنفُسَهُ Do not insult yourselves. Do not broadcast your shortcomings. And then Allah says, and, and speak, and, and then Allah says, the third thing that He says, so Allah begins the eyes by saying, oh you who believe, do not ridicule one another. Do not be fault finders, right? Do not expose the faults of people. And can you imagine we lived in a community where people had this mentality? And then number three, Allah says, "Wala tanabazu bil alqab." Look at how much attention Allah is giving to protecting the honor of people. Don't ridicule people. Don't expose people's faults, and do not even address people with offensive nicknames. You know, sometimes even among friends. We give, we call upon each other with nicknames. And in many cases, the nicknames are disrespectful. They're insulting. They're offensive. Even when it comes to nicknames, be careful. Address people with adab, with respect. You know, there's a, I was reading a beautiful hadith today. We all know that when Allah instructed Musa to go to Fir'aun, to invite him towards Tawheed and righteousness, to abandon his corrupt ways. Allah tells Musa and Harun, lahu layina, that, O oh, oh Musa, O oh Harun, when you go to Fir'aun, speak to him with gentle words. Imam, there's a hadith from Imam Musa ibn Ja'far al kazim our seventh Imam. Someone asks Imam al kazim what does it mean? What did Allah mean when He said, speak to Him with gentle words? Imam al kazim alayhi salam, He says, Allah meant, O Musa, O Harun, when you address Fir'aun, address him using his kunya. Meaning, don't go up to Fir'aun and say, listen up, you tyrant. Or listen up, you murderer. Or you kafir. No, don't talk to him like that. Call, say, Ya Aba Mus'ab. Aba Mus'ab was the kunya of Fir'aun. Address him with a respectable title. Say, Ya Aba Mus'ab. Don't use... A, a disrespectful title. Don't use an offensive expression. Do not use offensive nicknames. Even if someone might laugh about it, deep down it might hurt them. You need to be very cautious about how you speak to other believers, how you speak to people in general. You know, some of us, we, we do a lot of ihtiyat when it comes to tahara and najasa, right? Some people say, Shaykh, I think, a, I think a drop of liquid fell on my clothes and I don't know, should I go wash my clothes? Should I do ghusl? What should I do? Some of us, we do so much ihtiyat when it comes to tahara and najasa. We need to have ihtiyat when it comes to how we address people. When we have to have ihtiyat when it comes to akhlaq. When it comes to Adab, the same guy who's, who has so much ihtiyat about Tahara and Najasa, he has no ihtiyat when it comes to backbiting, when it comes to being in a gathering where people are being slandered. But if you want to have ihtiyat, this is where you have ihtiyat. Now it's good to be cautious, but this is particularly where you need to be cautious when it comes to protecting the honor and the dignity of people, that you don't hurt people's feelings. You know, I remember, you know, when I when I was in high school, 
And uh, I had friends, many of them were Shias, they come from religious families. And one of our classmates was overweight. He was overweight. Now, you know, teenagers, they can be pretty brutal. The, his name was Hassan. This, this guy, his name was Hassan. But no one called him Hassan. They gave him a nickname. What do you think his nickname was? Because he was overweight, they used to call him Refrigerator. Can you imagine? And Refrigerator was too long, so they shortened it to Fridge. Yeah, I mean, what, a, what an honor, right? They called him Fridge. And believe me, until today, 15 years later, 10, 15 years later, people still call him by this name. Isn't this? Now, he might not say anything, but don't you think this is insulting? This is, this is against the Quran. That you shouldn't call people offensive nicknames. Even if they don't say anything. Sometimes, you know, you might insult someone, but because they're too shy or because they don't want, they're not confrontational, they might not say anything about it. You have to speak to people with adab, with respect. You know, even the son of Abu Jahl, Abu Jahl is the arch enemy of the Prophet. His son, Ikrama, he became Muslim. The Prophet told his companions that do not call, do not refer to his father as Abu Jahl. Because it will hurt him. Yes, his father is an enemy of God. He's from Ahl Ahl Nar. But his son, you know, it's at the end of the day, it's his father. That when you refer to his father, do not call him Abu Jahl. Abu Jahl was not, it was you know a nickname that he was given. Be you know, be, be sensitive to his feelings. Don't call him Abu Jahl in front of his son. And then Allah says, So Allah mentioned three instructions. So again, you see how this relates to creating a community of love, of respect. Don't ridicule each other. Do not broadcast each other's shortcomings. Do not address each other with offensive nicknames. And Allah says, Oh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بِئْسَ الْإِسْمُ الْفُسُوقُ بَعْدَ الْإِيمَانِ That it is wretched to use bad names instead of names that are compatible with faith. You are, you're now mu'mineen. You shouldn't use language that is not compatible with iman. Or in some mufassireen, they say that this ayah means, this part of the verse means that it is, it's reprehensible to to engage in these sinful acts after you have become mu'min after you've become faithful that you know if if you're a believer it has to show in your life that you you can't be like everybody else you know and i think and i've mentioned this before muslims should not say that oh we're just like everybody else no we're not like everybody else we hold ourselves to the highest moral standard we, have, we can't be like non-Muslims. We have to be better when it comes to our akhlaq, when it comes to our behavior, when it comes to our conduct. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بِئْسَ الْإِسْمُ الْفُسُوقُ بَعْدِ الْإِيمَانِ It's not appropriate for you to do these things after you have professed belief. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَتُبْ And then Allah says, as for those who don't repent. So, if you if you do these things, if you ridicule and you broadcast people's shortcomings, if you call people by offensive nicknames, you have to ask Allah for forgiveness. You have to make toba. So Allah says, "I'll I'll pardon you," but if you don't ask for forgiveness, if you don't repent, you're a valim. You know, we, we think that a valim is someone who kills people or who wrongfully imprisons them. Someone who ridicules other Muslims is a valim. Someone who broadcasts and publicizes people's shortcomings. This is a valim. He's an oppressive person. 
someone who calls upon people by offensive nicknames. You know, Avalim is not just MBS in Saudi Arabia or Saddam Hussein or Donald Trump. No, sometimes we are also Avalims because of the way that we speak to Mu'mineen, because of the way that we speak to people. Allah says, if you don't make Toba, you are Avalim. And we don't want to meet Allah on the Day of Judgment as Valimin. It's not, it's not, the Day of Judgment is not a good day for people who are oppressive, for people who are wrongdoers. So we have to rectify ourselves so we're not among a Valimin. Now, you know, when it comes to this, uh, you know, this issue of, of ridicule, as mentioned earlier, that even even some of the senior companions of the Prophet were not immune of this. Some of them used to, you know, a lot of the companions, they used to fight alongside the Prophet. They used to pray behind the Prophet. But they, they would sometimes fail when it comes to how they conduct themselves with other Muslims. You know, for example, you have a companion of the Prophet by the name of Thabit, Thabit ibn Qais, who was the Khatib of the Prophet. He used to make announcements on behalf of the Prophet. He was a very prominent companion. And he had he had a hearing problem. So whenever he would attend a gathering, he would want to sit as close as he could to the Prophet so he can hear. One day he arrives late. The Prophet is giving a majlis. He's giving a sermon. And he was trying to move as close as he could to the Prophet, but it was crowded and he wasn't able to reach. And one man told him just to sit down. So he ends up sitting far away. And this was very early in the morning and the sun was rising. You know, in the message of the Prophet, it, wasn't very, it was no electricity, so it was very dim. When the sun rose, Thabit, he sees that the man that told him to sit was someone who was not a very well-known or prominent person. You know, are, they were a second-class citizen, if we want to use that term. So Thabit, he sees this person, and he insults them. That who are you to tell me where to sit? And he insulted this man by saying that you are, this, you are the son of so-and-so. And he insulted his mother by mentioning a name that she had during the time of Jahiliyyah. So you see that some of the Mufassirin, they say this ayah was revealed because of that. So even someone who was the khatib of the Prophet, some of them, they, they would fail when it came to these akhlaqi issues. You know, even Umm Salama, the wife of the Prophet, you know, you know, some women in Medina, they used to make fun of her. You know, sometimes we forget that these noble personalities, they were harassed. They were ridiculed. So Umm Salama, the wife of the Prophet, such an honorable woman. I, you know, it's not an exaggeration to say that, you know, after, after Khadija, one of the most noble wives of the Prophet was Umm Salama. She was such an honorable woman. She was incredibly wise. She was so faithful and loving towards the Ahlul Bayt. She was also, according to historians, she was a very good-looking woman. But she was very short. Um Salama was a very short woman. And some women, they used to ridicule her because of her height. But those people who were ridiculing her, they failed to realize that Um Salama is, is better than them. She's closer to Allah. She's better in the eyes of God than they are. You know, that, that, that companion of the Prophet who insulted Bilal, right? one of the prominent companions of the Prophet, he saw Bilal sitting close to the Prophet and he told him, Qum ya Sauda, get up, O son of the black woman. That's the equivalent of using the N-word today. Bilal was heartbroken so hurt he went to the prophet and he told him what happened and the prophet summoned that companion and he told him that it seems that the stain of jahiliya has not been removed from your heart 
So this companion was obviously, he was reprimanded by the Prophet. He goes to Bilal and says, Oh Bilal, please forgive me. And in fact, to show you how remorseful I am and how sorry I am, I'm going to put my face on the ground and I want you to, to step on my face so I learn a lesson. So I never insult you ever again. Bilal, what does he say? He says that, how can I put my foot on the face of a fellow Muslim who does sujood to Allah? He insulted Bilal, but who is better in the eyes of God? Bilal. Bilal demonstrated his humility. So in many cases, the people that we ridicule, we never know, maybe they're better in the eyes of Allah. And chances are they are better because we're the ones who are insulting. Right? So some of the Mufassireen of the Quran, when they, when they looked at verse 11, they tried to, they have a discussion about the difference between hems and lems. And the word hems is mentioned throughout the Quran, you know, وَيْلٌ لِكُلِّ أُمَزَةٍ لُمَزَةٍ you know, the, the idea of Hamazatu Shayateen. Now, there is no consensus regarding the, the differences between the two. So some scholars, they say it's the same, that they're synonymous, that they're synonyms. But other ulama, they've mentioned that, that uh, lens is different from hems. You know, when Allah says, وَيْلٌ لِكُلِّ humazatin Hems, they say it's, it refers to slandering someone using the tongue, only the tongue, and doing it in their face. You know, sometimes there are people when they when they backbite, when they talk about someone behind another person's back, and you tell them that, you know, we shouldn't talk about people behind their back. What do they usually say? They say, No, I'll say it to their face. As if it makes as if it makes it halal, because you say it to their face. This is this is hams to because we have another sin which is called idha'ul mu'min. So just because you you say that I, I'll say it to their face, it doesn't make it halal because it's also haram to hurt another mu'min, to hurt another believer. So hems, they say that it is to slander or make a disparaging remark about a believer using the tongue and doing it in their face. So you do it to their face. Whereas lems is to lems is to broadcast someone's shortcomings and it's to do it behind their back and it's more broad than using the tongue it can be even a gesture so lems according to some linguists they say it's behind someone's back and it's it's with respect to kind of exposing uh something that's confidential shortcoming and it's to use either the tongue or even gestures. Whereas hems is only, it's only related to the tongue. So, so when Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amilu la yaskhar qawmun min qawm. So sukhriya, so lems is, is referring to exposing a fault, a shortcoming. Whereas ridiculing someone doesn't necessarily have to be related to, to a shortcoming. So some, you know, someone might be dressed differently and someone may make fun of them. So la yaskha qawmun min qawm. So sukhriya is more general than that. It's to just make fun of someone. And it doesn't necessarily have to, it's not even related to the idea of exposing a fault. It's just to make fun of someone. For any reason, whether it's something related to their physical appearance, their behavior, if someone just makes a mistake, so sukhriya is different from men's. No, so so of course Abu Jahl is an exception, you know, because he's not only is he a kafir, he's kafir harbi, he's a combatant uh, unbeliever, disbeliever. So he so. From a fiqh standpoint, he's not he's not afforded that that type of uh, respect. But what the Prophet was doing, he was basically 
looking after the 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 feelings of this new Muslim, the son of of Abu Jah. But don't use, don't call his refer to his father as Abu Jahl in front of his son, because it will hurt his feelings. Like that's that's how much the Prophet cared about the uh, you know the sensitivities of uh, of his followers. But these verses are, you know, of, uh, referring to uh, to Mu'minin, because if you if you look at you know this idea of of name calling. Sometimes, you know, the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, they would, they would insult their enemies. You know, when the Imams would say, you know, Ad Da'i ibn Ad Da'i, you know, when, when Imam Hussein alayhi salam, when he addresses, you know, uh, uh, Shim, or when Amir al Mu'mineen addresses enemies, the Imams sometimes they would, they would use harsh names that were known that these people were known by to highlight that this is who you are and this is where you come from and basically you're 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 an illegitimate child so we shouldn't say that all oh, the imams were always spoke very lovey-dovey with everybody no there are times where they were uh they were very uh firm and they, they had a very firm stand against these enemies. And some, and these, these types of people needed to be exposed because there was a greater good that was being achieved. So these people don't manipulate the masses. Because they, they you know a lot of the enemies of Ahlul Bayt, they, they had a false claim to Islam. They had a false claim to religiosity. And when, they, when the Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam, when they make, when they curse, these individuals, when they call them by these names, they do it for a reason. You know, for example, when Imam Zain al Abidin refers to Yazid, when the Imams they say that you are the son of the woman who chewed the liver. Now, you can't say that all oh, the Imams should speak very nicely. No, the Imam is speaking to a specific combatant group of people. These are wicked people who are destroying the Ummah. And they and then the masses need to be reminded of their history. So these are exceptions to the rule, but the, the general rule of interaction between believers is this that you know do not call each other by offensive nicknames. But there are certain exceptions, like Yazid, like you know, Muawiyah and Amr ibn al-As. These people, no, the, these people, the, the Imams were very harsh with them. And rightfully so, because these are individuals that needed to be exposed because they they were causing damage to the religion of Islam.